All right, what's going on friends? In this video, I'm gonna be going over how to install your Minn Kota Altrex. And along with that, I'm gonna show you a little bit about how I hooked up my onboard battery charger. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I hooked up my Hummingbird Helix 8. Now this is the one that has side imaging. My Minn Kota is also the one that has side imaging. So if you want, now I bought 90% of what I used in my video here at Halls Marine. So if you live anywhere near me, they're located in Muncie, Pennsylvania, and I'll put down in the description their address and their phone number and, and their web address. Now, definitely you can buy boats there. I, you can buy these trolling motors there, but they have a really nice section of fishing gear. So if you wanna check them out for fishing gear, lots of nice fishing gear. They have lots of nice fishing poles, fishing reels. And like I say, you can also buy this humming, the Hummingbird Fish Finder and this Minn Kota. And if you have any questions, they're really, really good to help you out to get everything you need to install your Minn Kota. And if you want to get 10% off, let them know you've seen DIY Jim's video on how to install the Minn Kota Altrex. So let me go over how I install this. Toward the end of the video, I will go over some of my wiring on how I wired this up and some of the wiring on how I wired my Hummingbird. All right, I got the trolling motor itself all out of the box. It does come with a weedless prop. And this is a strap to hold it down when transporting it. You're gonna get a nice little fancy sticker. This is gonna mount onto your boat for your trolling motor. Comes with some stainless steel hardware to mount this to your boat. Nice little fancy remote. The one I'm mounting on my boat is the, the Minn Kota Altrex. It has side imaging. It comes with the heading sensor. This, this is gonna work when you wanna use your iPod or your spot lock. This is a strap for this remote. This remote definitely feels really, really nice. Hardware for the puck here. And some of the tools you may need when you're installing this, you're gonna need a number two screwdriver, two number threes. I'm gonna end up using my impact drill, one eighth inch flat tip screwdriver, one eighth inch Allen and a quarter inch Allen. Maybe it's something to mark some holes. You could probably just use a pencil if you want. I'm gonna use a little anti-seize on some of the stainless steel hardware. You may need to buy some wire. I recommend buying wire for marine, for like water, marine grade type wire. Wherever you bought your trolling motor, you probably could just buy some of this wire. It's gonna last a lot longer. Uh, you may need a drill, an impact drill. You're definitely gonna need a drill. I'm gonna end up using an impact drill. A 7 16th inch wrench. This is a stabilizer bar. When we cut this, you're gonna need maybe like a a file or a piece of sandpaper to file down the rough edges and a hacksaw to cut that. Uh, you may need an extra hand, so if you have a little buddy that you fish with, hopefully he's old enough that he can maybe help you out. All right, now I have the entire mount sitting on the front of my boat and we gotta take this quarter inch Allen here in the front off because we're gonna have to mount the trolling motor on here and then open this up just to see how it sits on my boat or your boat because you don't want this sitting wrong. And I actually have some holes here in my boat, so I'm hoping these holes that are in my boat line up. Save this bag that is on the end. We're gonna end up using this later. That's gonna help with your assist. You have a gas spring, assist spring in here that's gonna help open and close this so it's not so heavy. That's what this pin right here is for. I'll save this Allen, and I'm gonna put my trolling motor up there, and I got my boy up here to help me hold this on the boat. It should slide right down over these little, there's like a little piece here and one over there. If you look in the inside here, you'll see down here at this bottom, that's gonna hook in this bottom one. And this top one will slide in right here. I got my buddy helping me. Just like that. Now I gotta put that, put this, uh, Allen bolt back in here. Hang on. You got it? Feeling tough? No. Huh? No. No. Let me put this up a little. <clears throat> Get that out of my way. Is this? 100 miles an hour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. 
Not as fast as the engine. That makes sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. Now, if you want to use your torque wrench, this is 18 to 20 foot pounds. I don't have a torque wrench that's going to fit this Allen, so. 18 to 20 is not really, really tight. I mean, but I mean, just make sure it's tight, but you don't got to get crazy. Okay. That's on. Now we need to open this up and lay it down. Somehow. I think you pull this. You gotta pull this. Lift up. But there we go. Like that. Grab that motor. Oops. Yeah, hang on, let me let it go back down. Okay, there. Okay. Ready? Grab it. Just grab the motor. Keep going. I got this, kind of. Yep. Keep going. Keep going. She's heavy. The, that's that spring that's supposed to, once I get that hooked up, it's going to lift a lot easier. We got to lay this all the way down, though, but. Hang on. Let me get this pedal with that right there in the boat. Yeah. We want to lay this down. Oh, it should go down more. Goes more. Keep going. There we go. All right, now we are. You'll see it clip down in, down in here. Now, the reason we put this all on, you're gonna want to see where this is laying on your boat. You don't want the, you don't want this piece right here sticking way out over the edge of your boat. So, like when you would come into a dock or something, you're not gonna want that to hit stuff. So, you know, I don't want to mount this thing on my boat like this. I don't want to mount it on my boat so this is sticking way out here like that. And if some reason you already have some holes in your boat from like a trolling motor that you had before or maybe you bought your boat used, there are, there's holes down inside here and you can also take these covers off and there's other holes here. They're going to want you to have at least at the minimum to have four bolts in this. So I'm going to try to shoot for probably six bolts in this because it's a pretty heavy trolling motor. All right, my helper left me. When you have this thing up, you're gonna wanna have this shaft. It says in your manual, like I said, you might wanna read your manual to have the shaft of this at least an inch and a half away from your boat. So right now, it's definitely gonna be way more than an inch and a half because this shaft is gonna come down right, in, right at the point of this. So I could move this thing definitely way back. If you don't have any holes in your boat, like I already have holes, like I said, I'm gonna try to see if I can hit any of them holes so I don't have to drill a whole bunch more holes. It's probably gonna be a little easier for you. When you have this up, see where that shaft is about an inch and a half, and then kind of maybe put a couple little marks on your boat, something you can maybe erase or something you won't see. Maybe if you, if you just use a pencil or something, that way, when you open this back up so you can see the holes in it, you, in case you end up moving a little bit, you can put it back on them marks. I'm going to check in behind here because I know there's a couple, there's three more holes in here. I'm wondering if whoever mounted this on this boat before used some of these holes lining up. doesn't look like they're all lining up. So, like I said, if you have no holes, it's probably going to somewhat be easier other than you have to drill some holes. Yeah, see there's hole there, hole there, hole there. Let's see if they line up. It doesn't look bad there, but oh, that lines up, that lines up. I have a whole bunch lining up now. That's what I'm going to do right there. Now you're just going to want to use that bag. This is what's going to mount that on. And to get in under this, I ended up taking off, uh, there's a, probably a little piece in the front of your boat, like this is where I'm gonna plug in my trolling motor. That's another piece I did have to buy separately to buy it because every boat has different plugs. So you may have to buy a plug, whatever that matches your boat. But I took that out and I'm gonna be able to stick my arm up inside there, connect these nuts. I'm gonna put some of this anti-seize on some of these bolts just in case I'd have to take this back off. Uh, I gotta take 
this piece off too if I want to use these holes. Two. This is way easier with help. Trust me. My helpers are out playing soccer. There we go. Want this piece out. Yeah, like that. Now this is where you're going to have to mark that with a marker. Use your 932nd inch drill bit and drill them holes down in there. I'm able to use all these holes. Thank goodness. And I see on there. A little extra work, but... All right, with a little bit of persuasion, I was able to use all six holes that were already in my boat. So I think it kind of would be maybe even easier if you just didn't have no holes and you made your own holes, but I didn't want to have to drill new holes. So I ended up having to take a little, take this kind of apart. Looks like I took this piece off so I could utilize that hole right there. And we'll put this back on. Now you're going to want a washer and a nut down underneath. All right, before you tighten up all them bolts, make sure you put your strap in there. You're gonna want that in between the first bolts and the second set of bolts. Probably, so it's probably gonna be right here by the K or N on your trolling motor. All right, and make sure when you put this strap in, you feel that the Velcro, make sure that's down. So the, Vel like the Velcro, the soft spot, and the, the rougher spot's gonna be toward the on your boat, so you have this mounted right, just like that. And pull this, so this buckle is probably right about like that. That should work. You'll be able to put that over it like that, buckle that on. And then after you get that on, then that's when you can tighten all your bolts down. All right, this is where you're going to use your 7 16 inch wrench down underneath this. So hopefully you can stick your hand in there somewhere. Put the washer on first and then that nut. I already have one of these on. That was tight. All right, I want to show you a trick to tighten in these bolts up. It is a little easier if you push. I already have the nut on that one. I'll push that, I'm going to push that all the way up like this and then screw it down in and have my boxed end wrench on that nut. Just like that. That way the wrench doesn't keep slipping off. All right, let me get all six of these tightened up and we'll move on to the next step. All right, next step is I'm going to, we're going to hook up this gas spring. This is your lift assist, so it will be a lot easier to lift up and to put it in the water. So that bag that we took off the front, you're going to have a pin like this and a couple spacers and there's two screws in there. You're going to take one of them screws and just screw it in the end of that pin and there's some uh, like Loctite on there, so it's not going to screw in easy. Just get it started. But you want to start that, maybe get it started just a little. Once you get it with your fingers a little bit, start it just a little with your screwdriver there. Then I have this pulled up a little. You're going to want to pull this up a little bit more just to get where that spring assist is going to be able to go into these holes right here. Oh, right there. You're going to take that pin, put that through that hole. Put that spacer on, put one of your spacers on there. Okay, lift your gas spring up and start putting it in that gas spring. And we're gonna take that other spacer, get it started in there, and then push it. Push it in with your face like I am. 
still. And then you're going to get your other screws started. I don't recommend throwing a drill on there until you know you got them threads started. You don't want to strip this out. I think I got it. I'm going to try it a little bit with the screwdriver. I think I got it. So I'm going to hold that. Yeah, got it. Here we go. Now, it should be a lot easier to go up and down. All right, next step is I'm going to take off this 9 16 inch nut. You are going to need maybe a 9 16 inch socket. We're going to take that nut off. You're going to use that nut, so keep that. You're not going to need this little red washer. Get rid of that. You're, you will need this washer. All right, before you take this plastic piece off, put your hand under that. Put your hand under there. Because there's going to be a pin. You don't want to lose this little pin. It goes in that little hole right there. And it, if the shaft is like that, it's going to fall right out. So be careful. Now your prop is going to have a little spot in here where that pin's going to go. So you put that pin back in. Let's turn that just a little bit so that pin will stay there. And put that on. You got to line that up. There you go. You'll feel when it's lined up. Put the washer on and the nut. Make sure when you put these nuts on too that there's, you can see inside there, there's some white. It's like that's the locking part of that nut. So that is going to, you're going to, that is going to be facing you. You don't want to put them on backwards. I mean, I, they probably would work, but that's not how you put them. And then use your 9 16 Tighten it up. And it should just, you'll feel it bottom out. Right there, it's bottomed out. Tighten it up a little more. All right. She's on there. That pin was, that was your shear pin. Now that's going to help protect your motor here. That pin is made to break before the motor breaks, just in case you hit something really hard. All right, next step is going to be putting the stabilizer arm on. Now, this there's two bolts right up here. You can take this nut off. We're not going to need these nuts. Just set them aside, take the other one off. Now be careful, there's some lock washers on there. Take them washers off. We will use them. And then we got these two Allen screws. We will use them. Set them aside. Now I'm going to show you on this trolling motor. Here you can take this piece off also. Well, first you have to take this top, take that little rubber cap off. We're going to use that also. Don't lose that. And just screw this off like that. Now this piece right here is going to get mounted either on this side like that or you can put this on the other side depending on how your boat is. If you can get that stabilizer arm to hit on the side of your boat and you want it to hit there, mount it on this side. If you want, and mine, the edge of my boat is rounded so I don't think I'm going to want to try to even hit that. I don't know if it would even hit that. No, it won't. Mine does go, I think I can still mount mine right here on the inside. It's going to go down and hit right there. I think whoever had this boat before me had the same exact trolling motor because you can see an indent right here in my carpet. I'm going to mount mine there. And like I said, you could mount that on the other side if you want. All right, I'm going to still put a little anti-seize on these. Try not, I should have told you in the beginning, try not to get the sole of your fingers because it's like a mess. Not getting too much on there. Make sure you don't forget that little lock nut should have put that on there first mount this right in here and that your quarter inch allen is going to work to tighten that up put your lock washer on a little of that anisees tighten that up you should be able to get that in by hand almost all the way then you have to use your allen wrench tighten it up like that Good. 
All right, now we're gonna take this piece here, the piece that has a little plastic nut on it, and there's a little cap here at this end. I'm gonna take the this end that has the threads, the plastic nut, I'm gonna put that on my boat where it's gonna sit. It's gonna be upside down, that's okay. We're just gonna mark this. Now we're gonna put that next to the piece here that we just mounted on, and we're gonna mark about three quarters of an inch above that. Now if you wanna get a tape measure and measure, you can. You could put a tape measure up there and measure that if you want. So you can go three quarters of an inch. And that's right there's where we're gonna cut that. Cause this comes long, cause all boats are a little different. Now right there where you marked, that's where you're gonna take your hacksaw or whatever you have to cut that. And also if you noticed, I really love these 12 volt Milwaukee tools. I have this, this is a little hacksaw and I do have the drill and I had the little impact drill that I've been using and for a homeowner, they're not that bad priced. Like Milwaukee is definitely expensive, but if you get to 12 volt, it's not that bad. I'll put some of this stuff down in the description too, if I can, if you guys want to pick any of them up. All right, now this is where you're going to want to take that file or sandpaper and just file down some of these rough edges. All right, I cheated. I used my bench, my bench grinder. So if you have that, that'll work. Take that little cap off. You're gonna put that back on the part you just cut, just like that. Pick your trolling motor up a little, thread that in there. Seems good. And if you have to adjust this any, you can still take it down and then you ride this plastic nut up so it's tight. But I think mine's really good right there. <clears throat> yep, that lands nice. Still locks in. Perfect. And you can take you can take that other cap that we took off and put that on those threads. All right, if you have the same trolling motor that I have, I have mega side imaging and I have an iPilot cord. It comes out of the head up here. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try to organize these a little better. I have this up a little bit, just in case I ever wanna run this a little higher. They come through this cord right here and then I zip tied it right here just to try to keep that so it stays a little nice. Don't over tighten this. It says that in the manual. Like I said, make sure you read your manual. You don't want to mess these cords up. So I don't have that really, really tight. And I would recommend getting really nice, really good zip ties or maybe even better, get some like little Velcro straps would probably be even nicer you can buy for this so it doesn't rub into that. I may go out and purchase some of them later and then just cut these off. I'm gonna estimate where I would normally keep this foot pedal. I'm thinking maybe right about there. I think that's where I'll keep it, Something like that. And then I'm gonna zip tie these on a couple more times. I'm not gonna to get too crazy, just in case I change something later. Maybe put two more zip ties here. And then I think I'm gonna put my, my hummingbird up here somewhere. That looks better. All right, really looks like all I have left other than hooking up my hummingbird fish finder. I got the heading sensor that I got to hook up. Now when you hook this up, there's a little arrow on here that has to point toward the front of your boat. And if you, I recommend definitely reading the your directions on this, read your installation manual. You can't have this too close, any really high powered wires or this could mess this up. Oh, and then this also goes to a 12 volt. So if you have like a 24 volt trolling motor, you cannot wire this right into your 24 volt batteries. So maybe up under your dash, you'll be able to wire this to, or you're gonna have to take this all the way back to where your 12 volt 
tool your 12 volt battery is back maybe by near your engine or something but that's just some tips on that and then this is going to be your power here this will get wired to like my trolling motor is the 24 volt version so i have two 12 volt batteries that i'm going to wire this up to i'm going to end up cutting this hook a plug on that i bought and i bought this plug here everything i bought here a lot of the stuff i bought here i bought at halls this plug is going to go into my plug right here that i already have on my boat but like i said all boats don't have the same exact plug so you're going to, have to see what plug you need but let me get the rest of this all hooked up and i'll kind of try to show you here at the end how i have everything hooked up like the battery and this heading sensor all right first off some of these other videos I've seen online are putting the end of their Minn Kota off the edge of their boat a lot further than I did, but just to let you know that it does work right around two inches. I think some of the other ones are going out over the edge, maybe three or four inches, so that's totally fine. I went over only right around two because I already had a whole bunch of holes in my boat and I wanted to use them holes up. And when I got it in place, it works just fine. I just had it out in the water yesterday. All right, now I'm up in my boat and I'll show you. Now, I mounted my batteries up front of my boat because I have a 65 jet on here and I just kind of wanted to distribute the weight evenly in my boat so I didn't have all the weight in the back end. But these two batteries here are wired up for my trolling motor. Now I have a 24 volt trolling motor. If you have a 36 volt trolling motor, most likely you're gonna have three batteries. But let me show you how I did the wiring. It's real simple. Along with, I do have a 60 amp breaker. You just, I'll show you that. Actually, let me show you. First off, we'll go from, first my wiring went right into this plug. Now, depending on what kind of boat you have, you might have a different plug. It didn't come with that plug, so you have to buy the plug that matches your, matches your boat. And I ended up cutting this is the power wire that comes right out of your pedal. So I ended up cutting some of that off and I wired up this plug that matched my boat. Now, then the red and the black wire come out of the back of this plug directly right Yeah, directly right over here to these two to these two 12 volt batteries. Now, first the red wire that comes out of the back of that plug goes right up here into this 60 amp breaker this wire right here the one here that's on the bottom side of this 60 amp breaker goes to my trolling motor and it comes and it comes out of the top of that and i put it right on the positive terminal okay and then the black wire that comes out of the back of that plug like i was showing you up there is all the way over on the other side right there so that's the black wire out of the back, and that's the red wire out of the back of that plug. And then this wire, then I have this positive and this negative wired together, and that's gonna give me my 24 volts. This, this is the same wire. It's right here. See? Okay, that's pretty much it for my trolling motor, along with, then I can show you, I did wire up this Pro Sport 8, that's a two bank charger. That means I can charge two batteries. You can also buy that with a three bank charger. So you could also, if you have three batteries, like I have a battery connected to my 65 jet engine, just for starting the engine, I have that 12 volt battery back there. But since I have batteries up front and batteries in the back, I thought it'd be okay just to get the two bank a little easier. Later on, I might buy a one bank and put up front or put in the back. But that was really, really simple. That just has a power wire, right? It just has the power wire that I'll plug in. So I just leave that down in there. Then there's two more wires that come off of this charger. Or, yeah, two more wires that come off and there'll be a positive and a negative on one wire and a positive Right here, positive and a negative on the other. I just wired them up. Real, real simple. That's all there is to that onboard charger and how I wired up my Minn Kota Altrex trolling motor. And then, all right, now I'll tell you a little bit about this Hummingbird Helix 8 that I bought. 
Now because I have the side imaging, I did have to buy a couple more adapters. I had to buy the Ethernet dongle and I had to buy the built-in Mega Imaging adapter cable. I had to buy these two separate ones, which is um, yeah, which is this wire right here and this wire right here. That plugged into the back and then this wire and this wire came comes right out of the Minn Kota. I had bought those two separate adapters and they just plugged into my Hummingbird and then it did have this wire right here is my power wire. You're going to want to power your Hummingbird from separate batteries. You cannot power that from the same batteries that you have your trolling motor powered from. You're going to have to power that from I have that back here in the back. It's being powered from my cranking battery. There's not really much to show you back here. But yeah, that's being what powered from this cranking battery. That and I'll show you. If you got the Minn Kota with the spot lock on it, you're also going to have this little puck right here. That's going to run, um, run off the satellites and stuff. So when you push spot lock, it'll be able to keep you in place. And another thing, when you go mount this, that arrow is going to have to point to the front of your boat. Make sure you don't put that on crooked. Um, along with, do your best to not have this around really like your, like if you have eight or 10 gauge power wire going to like your trolling motor, try not to mount this right near something really with a lot of power going through it. You don't want to mess it up. Um, that's kind of why I put it here. There's really no high powered wires right here. They're way over here in the corner. All right, now those, the wires that are coming back here from the engine, from that cranking battery, that battery is powering this and it's powering my hummingbird like I was saying, but it does go, I bought this fuse block right here. So I have the, the black and red wire coming from that cranking battery goes in there. Now this little thin one right here that goes to that little white puck that's going to run my spot lock and then that other red, that other little red wire over there, that's going to the hummingbird. Along, then I have a five amp fuse for the hummingbird, and I really probably don't need that five amp fuse there. It probably could be like a two amp fuse, but I couldn't find my two amp, so I I, I know where they're not. Uh, I know where they're at now. I'm going to take that five amp out and put a two amp in there. But now, if I buy another, do get another hummingbird or some type of fish finder, I can mount it right here or maybe mount it up here and I can easily just wire it under my dash right here. All right, thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope I gave you a couple tips to get your Minn Kota Ultrex mounted on your boat. I hope I helped you out a little bit with the wiring. Give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button to help support my channel. God bless and happy fishing.